All right, so this is going to be a continuation for the crash course lesson two for property board styling. So um, if you're watching the first video, uh, uh, crash course lesson two, the audio cut out right towards the end. Um, I didn't realize it. Uh, my mic, for whatever reason, decided to kick out. Um, so uh, I'm just reshooting it, uh, and I'm just going to load it up as a separate video uh, rather than do the whole thing over. So uh, I'll put a link in the old video. That way anybody who needs the narration can jump over. Um, but so this is picking up from Crash Course Lesson 2. If you haven't seen that video, this may not make quite as much sense. Um, but uh, So basically we've built a style and we're going to take this style. I'm going to put it into my config file. Um, so having after built this file, uh, this style, uh, the first thing you want to do is you're going to hit the copy button. That will add the style PTR opening and it'll also add the closing that's needed. And then I'm going to go over to my config file. And actually, let me do this from scratch. So you have an existing config, or if you have the default config, um, whatever, uh, you're going to need your config file to add this. We're going to, uh, and I do recommend referring to the manual until you get the hang of this. Um, and there are some videos on this as well. Um, but basically, I'm just going to kind of go through it. So I want to add this new style as my first preset. Now, if you wanted to put it elsewhere, obviously, you just go in order. Um, so, you know, these are... These are the color change styles that are rather large, but you would find whatever order you want it to be. But for ease of use, I'm going to add this as my new first preset. So I'm going to open the preset with the bracket. And the first, within quotations, is the name of the font folder that you're going to um, pull the fonts from on your SD card. And that has to be spelled correctly and has to be capitalized the same as what's on that SD card. So if you have a different spelling on your SD card, you're, it's not going to see it. Um, and then the second, uh, value is going to be the music track or other track that you want for that preset. And I'm just copying what's there now. Um, and then I always close this preset uh, before I put a style in. That way you don't forget it. If you forget the close of this or that comma, you're going to get a compiler. All right, so that's in place. And then I'm going to do two line breaks. And then right here is where we're going to insert that copied uh, style. So I'm just going to go paste. And now it's ready to go. So always want to save. Uh, I've said this on other videos. Make sure you save the config file before you go to upload it. Uh, I've done it myself where you load up a bunch of stuff, but you forget to hit save. You go compile, it loads to the board, uh, goes up great, and then you test your saber, and it's not what you just loaded. And you scratch your head. Uh, you think something's busted, but it turns out you just didn't save the config file. Um, so now that's all good. So now you would load this up. Um, so, you know, again, follow directions or other videos related to actually loading this to your board um, and test it out and see what it looks like. Because, again, I, I've said this a few times on a few videos, the, the style editor is a great representation of what you're styling, but it's not what it actually translates to real world. So sometimes certain effects look actually a little bit different in editor than they do in person, um, mostly because, you know, the... The resolution you're getting on your screen isn't quite what you're going to actually get with NeoPixel resolution because of the number of pixels you have. Um, and some of it are sometimes the colors look great on editor and they don't look good on your Saber or vice versa. Sometimes something on your Saber looks great, but then, you know, you load it up on editor and you're like, oh, this doesn't look the same. So don't always just go by what editor is. I always test my styles on my actual blade to make sure it's where I want. So let's say I've now loaded this up. Great. Um, and, you know, it's something about it I didn't particularly like. I want to change something, you know, maybe that original blast that we had in there wasn't, you know, it looks great on editor, but then when I was playing with it, I didn't like the, the end result. Um, or uh, some other thing I want to change. I'm going to show you how you can go back in and edit uh, an existing style in Style Editor. So I've loaded this up, tested on my Saber. Uh, you know, I came back the next day. I have my, so let's close my browser. I don't have that open anymore. I just have the basic style editor. I've got my config file, which is on your machine. Um, I want to get this style back into editor, do some more work on it. So all you're going to do is you're only grabbing the style. All right. So you're not grabbing the font folder. You're not grabbing the track. You're not grabbing that closed bracket, just that style. That's why I put those line breaks in myself is so that I have that. And then you're going to copy it. And now I'm going to go to a new window. And you can do this with any style. So you can do this with 
styles you've built. You can do it with styles from my library. You could do it with styles from other people's libraries. Uh, you could do it with styles from the um, the sharing thread. Um, basically, all you need is the style to be copied, and then you can bring it back into editor and do work on it. Um, now, the caveat being, uh, and I've said this on the other videos, this is right now what's available on the main OS. Um, so the color change fork, which a lot of people are asking about, um, does not have an editor yet. Um, so we don't have a way for you to edit color change styles. So if you go to my library for color change, using the color change fork, uh, those, if you want to edit those, you're going to have to do those by hand right now. We are looking at uh, getting an update to a version of the editor for the fork or maybe getting another tool in place. Uh, I don't have any timeline on that. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the easiest undertaking. Uh, and also, I know there's a lot of other uh, people do have real lives uh, and it, it's quite time consuming. Just getting color change out was actually pretty time consuming for both Matt and I. Um, but so this is just normal OS, normal styles. That's what we're able to do this with right now. Um, so I'm going to come into style editor. I have already copied that style out of my config or another source. And I'm just going to paste it in here. And now when you paste into this, it's not going to show up here until I hit submit. So I'm going to hit submit. And now that style is here. And now it's it's back to being editable. So let's say, you know, I didn't particularly, this audio flicker wasn't quite enough for me. So if I want to edit it, I'm going to click in here. And I want to maybe take this. So say I wanted it to be a little more flicker. What I would usually do is, is kind of dim that second value a little bit more. So again, knowing RGB, I'm going to maybe take this down to like 90. Hit submit. And then I'm going to go all the way back up to the top and see what that looks like. So that has a little bit more flicker. And again, you're going to want to also test to confirm that that flicker, first of all, again, with audio flicker, it also, the other variable with audio flicker is your actual font. So if it's not doing quite what you want, on a particular font, it looks great here. This is just kind of a guesstimate. Um, so particularly Audio Flicker, usually you'll want to actually test it with the font you plan on using and then make those adjustments, but this is how you would do it. Um, so now, so let's say, and, and this came up, um, you know, I've actually said it, it's come up that it is harder to uh, take away stuff that has a lot of stuff inside of it. Um, it's not impossible, uh, but there, there is a way to do it. It's um, so what we're going to do is I am going to say, say I want to get rid of this blast, this original blast. All right, I've got stuff nested inside of it. So that stuff that's nested inside of it, if I just replace original blast right now, it's actually going to clear it all out. All right. And uh, so I, I have said in the past that if you do that, it will go away. But let me show you actually kind of a trick. So I'm going to open another version of Style Editor. And this is going off of the fact that you might know what you want to do. If you don't know what you want to do, obviously it gets a little more, uh, you're going to have to do more with it. But say, say it's the blast I want to get rid of, right? So I'm going to click here on Original Blast. Now, if I just, so by clicking on Original Blast here, that means if I click something here right this second, don't do it, uh, it's going to replace everything that's nested within, which is my lockup, my OnSpark, and my base color which I just spent a lot of time working on. So I don't want to lose those. So what you're going to do is I'm going to grab what's nested in Blast for the base color. So grab the lockup. And this is the idea is I'm, I'm going to just change the Blast out. But I want to grab this, everything in the base color of Blast. And same thing if I wanted to change the Clash, if I wanted to change the lockup, you're going to go after that base and whatever's nested in there. All right, so now I've got all of this is what's active. This is... I'm now going to select all of this because that's all that's visible in this edit window. And I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go to a new version of editor. And I am going to paste it. And submit so that it's held. So that is what's nested in there. So now I can go back and don't close this window or you're going to lose that. I can go back to original blast. And let's say I want to go back to just the blast. I just did it. Now, just the blast obviously is going to grab that blue, blah, 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 all this other stuff to fill in. So that's what I was that's what I was mentioning earlier. If I just changed it, everything nested, it would go away. But guess what? I saved everything that was nested. So now I can come right back over here. Copy. Go here. 
base color for that. And that's just blue. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to paste from that other style editor and leave that style editor open. Don't close it because just in case I don't like this, I still have that backup. Submit. Now everything's right back where it was and I was able to pull the nested uh, parts of that original blast away and now I've got regular blast. And now let's go all the way up and let's see that new blast effect. So that's the effect there. So say that is a little short for my liking. Now I can go into blast and now you do have a lot in the way so you're gonna have to drill through but I wanna see wave size, wave speed, Fade out. Let's do the fade out. So that's how long it takes for it to disappear. Let's double that. Submit. And you'll get used to reading these, but you're just looking for these headings. So blast, everything gets pretty much called out. And then again, always a backup to the top. Let's see that. So that lasts a little longer, makes it more prominent. Um, and again, uh, blast, particularly white blast, check them on your blade. They do look different in my experience for most colors than what you see in editors. So, but so if, say that's great. If it's not, you know, you would continue doing your edits um, and you would go the same way. So same exact thing, say that you decided you wanted to change your clash, you would grab the base color part of that, copy all of this, paste it in another editor, change out your clash. So it's all the same steps. So you can, um, so I'm amending my previous statement. It is possible to, uh, adjust uh, other stuff. You just have to take that additional step to keep what was nested inside of it separate so you can pull it back in. I mean, you could, if you if you do wipe it out, you can rebuild it, um, you know, but this just saves you that. Um, so pretty much you can get away with doing it in editor. Um, again, uh, at this point in, in, in my experience, I still do a lot of hand coding. Um, I will try to do some videos with hand coding. Uh, what my my ultimate goal with these crash courses was kind of to pretend somebody who hasn't really explored editor or had experience with it and walk them through it to a point where they're then comfortable enough to just go and learn the rest of the way on their own. Um, but it seems like there has been some, you know, people out there who are already familiar enough with editor, but they want to kind of see how to do the really complex stuff. Um, the really complex stuff you can do in editor, but it also gets a little trickier, so I that's where the hand coding part comes in. So if I get the opportunity, I will try to do some of that. Um, but that's kind of more like a intermediate, advanced type thing. I'm still working my way through beginner stuff here. Um, so I, you know, as I get the opportunity, I, I, I'll try to share more info because it, it seems like some of the people out there are actually getting, uh, you know, learning out of this, which was the goal. So uh, so it makes it worthwhile. But so that's that's basically, it. and I'll just show one last piece. So. This all goes the same way, but let's go into, I have to go to my original style library. So not color change, because color change is not in the editor. So I should have had this open already, so you don't have to worry about this stuff. So say there is a, a style of mine that you kind of like. Uh, just pay attention to so the dual lockup mod. That is also part of a fork or a mod, so that won't run. So don't grab that one for this instance. But let's grab Luke's power up with localized lockup. So you can click just view and style editor, or you can hit copy. We'll do view and style editor because I think last video I did copy. So view and style editor. That will load it all up for you. So that one's there. So this has localized lockup in it. And that's what localized lockup is if you're not familiar with it. It's essentially when you do the lockup, only the center portion of the blade is going to be affected. Now, again, this is one where the white's not really showing up in here. When you see this in person, there is a lot of white flashing going on. Um, so the, the style editor doesn't necessarily show this perfectly. Um, and then there's actually a mix with a red. So that's supposed to be the, the alternate color or the saber you would cross with. So typically for Jedi colors, I would put a red in there. And then typically for um, for the effects, if it's a red saber, um, you know, you put blue or green. Uh, blue looks a little better to me, and it's a little more neutral. Um, so that if you happen to cross sabers with somebody with a green or a purple saber, the blue kind of lets you get away with it. Uh, if you have green in your localized lockup and you cross with a blue or a purple or any other saber, it, it to me, it, it's not the best appearance. So by default, almost all of my Sith red versions will have the blue uh, cross section mixed in there. And that's 
just from trial and error, again, personal taste. Um, but so this is that. So now the lockup is a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm going to save the localized lockup for a future thing because doing it in an editor is actually really cumbersome. Um, so that one I would definitely have to do as a hand-coded video. Um, and then again, the fork has a different localized lockup that actually simplifies it so much that maybe we'll get that into the main OS uh, at some point. Um, but so that's that's what's in here. So if you're going to edit, you can edit anything you want. And if you want to start looking at lockup, this is all of what makes the lockup. And you can see there's there's a good amount in here, um, and it, it all does something. Um, so it is editable. But I would say if if you haven't done a lot of work in editor, you're not as familiar. Maybe that one you don't go after first. Um, but uh, but any any style from any source, you can do the exact same thing. So you can either, in my libraries, when it's possible, I always put the view and style editor to let you edit it yourself. Uh, if you get it from someone else, you can use the method I showed earlier where you copy it out of the config uh, or out of the source and you paste it in and then you can edit it. Um, so as long as you get a style from some source, um, you can edit them in editor. And then again, if there was just portions of something, so say you, you wanted to go all the way out and pull out that localized clash, grab the nested values within localized clash for base, highlight them, then copy, then we'll go another version of style editor. paste it and don't lose track the more windows you get it does get a little tricky so typically I would work on one project at a time it's pasted submit and now that guy's good to go so now I can come back over here I can go one level up to my localized clash and I can replace it with the simple clash and then I'm gonna come back to the base color here I'm not losing track I'm gonna go back over here copy that Oops, oh, I, I'm trying to paste over here. Look at that. Uh, paste over here always. <laughs> Submit, and then we're back to start, but now I've swapped out that localized clash for simple clash. Um, so editing and dealing with nesting is entirely possible. It's just you want to be a little more precise and take a little more care with making sure you're grabbing the right stuff. Again, if you accidentally wipe it out, you just start over, um, you know, and if you're editing something that already exists, obviously that starting point source is there. So it's either on your config or wherever you got it from. So that's kind of a added backup. So you don't have to be nervous that you'll break something. Um, but, uh, you know, exploring and playing around with the editor, uh, exploring, testing out things with styles. That's how I learn. That's how I recommend everybody learns. Um, and, you know, just enjoy it. I mean, you're, you're literally designing, you know, your, to me, it's my childhood. Like I loved lightsabers, so having the ability to make a lightsaber that's solely my idea and what I like and all that, it's personalized, it's everything. That's what makes this so great. Um, so hopefully you all get the same kind of joy out of it. Um, but uh, I'll try to do more videos. Um, you know, I uh, as I get time, uh, I'll try to put some stuff together. I have, I've had some requests from different sources for different things they'd like to see. Some of that stuff that you guys are asking that's more advanced, I'll get there for you. Um, but I, I do kind of want to take this almost like a, uh, as if you were, you know, learning in a, in a class setting where, you know, you kind of build upon each thing. So that's, I do have a slight method to what I'm doing, but I also try to do, you know, what you're, what I've gotten the request for over time. Um, so hope that helps somebody. Um, again, if you're watching this one and you haven't seen the first part of it, the first part covers a, a good amount more, so I would definitely go watch the first part. This is meant to supplement just uh, the portion that the audio cut out and then hopefully add a little bit more with how to deal with uh, changing out pieces that have other nested pieces within them. So thanks for listening.